Good morning, everybody. It's Jochen Hyden, and I'm back with the Helsin vs. Hyden campaign. It's uh, January 28, 1942. Of course, I'm playing Japan. He's playing the Allies. All right, grab the dot base. And Ooh, that's bad. Um, yep, that's bad. <laughs> Looks like he's in Bowen already in Australia, and that really is going to cause me some issues. All right. So my minesweepers did manage to get some mines swept at uh, at um, Merak, and now we've got the narwhal sitting off of Numea here. So now I know that he's got the narwhal at Numea. Okay. Pretty quiet so far. Okay, some more mines are being swept at Merak. I'm glad I did send those ships down there, so now I know I can't be going in there without minesweepers. Okay, now into the AM air phase. Uh, no naval activity this turn. Hmm. A lot of blue sighting reports here, guys. That means that they're not entirely accurate. <clears throat> so, okay, so we're sweeping over Kung Cheng because I'm trying to figure out what are some of these fighters he's got here. He doesn't have them in cap, though. Sweeps are going out first before the fighters, which is good. Sorry, sweeps are going out before the bombers. That's what I meant to say. Seventeenth group army. Let me write that down. Seventeenth group army north of Kung Chang. I saw that. That's actually good information to have. All right, nice. 85th, 84th Chinese Corps. So I'm bombing this unit here because I don't want them attacking um, the the base force that I have here. That's not it's not good. So I'm sending these bombers in here to, to disrupt this unit so they can't hurt me too much. And it looks like we're getting a nice little chunk out of them here. Fifth Chinese Corps B. That's what we got here. I'm bombing this X because we're going to shock attack across from here into here next turn or this turn to try to open this rail line back up. Okay, um, and then we're bombing here to try to slow down all these units that are moving back towards Chungking. You'll notice there's a lot of move arrows, right? He's re he sees what we're doing here, <clears throat> and he's trying to bring his troops back down to protect Chungking. So we're trying to bomb all these little arrows to slow him down.
not the best not the I'm looking for supply hits over here and look at that another submarine look at that there's another submarine there in Manila at uh, Bataan I have to assume he's doing supply runs in there Ah, uh, watch. Guarantee they're going to hit, guys. They are totally, totally going to hit. These guys cannot miss. See? Cannot miss. Oh, jeez. These seagulls are the most deadly aircraft on this map. Ah, and then our last ship will be taken out by these. They don't miss either. What? What? Come on. Oh, why? Let's why. They're coming in so high. Get down lower. What are you afraid of? AM phase in the books. We lost one ship so far and not much else happening here. <sighs> weather, 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 weather. If it's not subs, it's weather. Okay, we're sending in some bombers to Langsa here, or Langsa, to, uh, we're trying to, we're trying to attack here this turn, so I'm trying to soften these guys up as much as I can. Okay, another big bombing raid going into Luchao, because I'm trying to save this unit here, and I need to hit these units to slow them down, because they're, they're moving towards us. Okay, big raid coming in from Singapore now. Um, hopefully this will be the coup de gras to soften these guys up. <laughs> wow. Look at that. 39 sallies and that's all we get from it. Three non-combat hits. What a waste. Jeez. I know it's the weather. It's not helping us out here, but golly. It'd be nice if we could actually hit something. Okay, that's it for the air phase. We'll see if any, if any more sub interactions. If not, we go into land combat. <sighs> Nothing like a nice cup of coffee on a Saturday morning. Okay, here we go. Land combat. Let's see what we get. <clears throat> okay, this is us attacking him. Just trying to blow him back out of this, this hex here. Cool. Another, that's another win. Milk a few more uh, destroyed squads out of there for my points. Alright, this is Madan. This is our oil base, right? Obviously, we're going to take this with no, no issues because there's nobody here. Nice. And then a deliberate attack by us at length. Uh, hopefully, we can do something here but I don't know if we're going to be able to break through no alright so we didn't break through but we can see that we actually did do a fair amount of damage to his 
his squads here. We destroyed a lot, and these Dutch squads, once you destroy them, they don't really come back. So it, let me see, we can kind of calculate how much AV we've taken off by doing this. So each one of these counts for, so that's 12, that's 30. So we should have them down to about 100 AV now. Uh, I'll have to bring some more troops up from Madon to help work on this, because these guys are just going to take forever to uproot. Okay, we're attacking at Puchang, trying to clear him out of here. And again, he does not go anywhere. I don't understand this. Look at this. No morale, no supply, no AV. He still won't go away. That's so annoying. Whatever. Alright, we're deliberate attacking here. This is clear terrain. We should have no issues blowing these guys out of here. And they should retreat back into the swamp here, if I'm correct. <clears throat> yep, back in the swamp you go, gentlemen. Out of here. Good hits here. Good casualties inflicted. Excellent. All right. Well, a couple little things here, but not not too much of a turn. Australia definitely is looking bad. It's looking really bad, and. If what I think happened happened in Australia, we're going to have some problems here. So I will show you when we go through um, what I think the problem is going to be in Australia. He's really coming up on us quick down there. Looks like we got a new AO on the map. All right, let's digest all this. Okay, uh, not a horrible turn. Uh, we do have some issues, especially in Australia, but we'll get to that. Let's look at the numbers. Aircraft losses today, three for us, none for him. Of those three losses, two pilots were killed. Ship sunk. Last turn, just one coastal mine super numerac. Uh, looking at army loss points, we took zero. He took 15. Zero strat points. And for the turn, we gained 66 points, bringing the win ratio up to 2.584. And if I'm correct, I believe that's going to be our high watermark so far. Let's take a look here. 2.584. Yeah, so that's the highest we've been to date. So at least we're still moving up despite some setbacks over the last few days. Don't mind that. Okay, looking at Combat Reporter, we'll start with uh, sea engagements. We did clear some mines at Merak, so I, I was right there were mines there, but if you see how few mines we've actually cleared, that's telling me that the mine density at Merak is very, very low. So we could probably pass right through there and not hit anything. Uh, we didn't get many because there's not many to get. I doubt that our coastal mine layer will survive another turn against those seagulls, but uh, I think we've cleared enough there to know that we can get through there okay. Uh, let's see. On the ground, another weird a weird situation at Puchang, but you know what? I think I've got this guy reduced so bad now, it doesn't even make any sense to attack it anymore. So I'm going to stop. I don't need to attack these guys anymore because there's nothing to be gained by me killing this core. At Madon, uh, we had another... Uh, okay, we captured Madon, which is a great because this is a major oil base on Sumatra, so we own that one now and basically grabbed it uh, undamaged. Langsa, unfortunately, we are once again unable to break through, but we did definitely kill some squads this turn, which is good because these don't get replaced for him. So we'll just have to kind of wear this, wear this down. 
Had a good result there in China. In two places, we pushed him back off our roads. For air attacks today, there was really nothing worthwhile. Sigan, now this is interesting. I looked at the rest of these. None of them were that important, but these are. Look at this. Radio transmissions next to Caroline Island in two different positions. Guys, 182 line. You see that? 182 line. Let's look at this. If we go out here to Caroline Island, which is here, he's got convoys on the 182 line. He's moving this way, guys. So we've had, we've had multiple heavy radio transmission second hits in this area. So I'm telling you, his convoy routes are like this. Are you ready? This is what I, my theory is. He's coming from West Coast, coming down, down this way, heading to Tahiti, maybe refueling there or, or doing something, and then continuing down and along the bottom edge of the map towards New Zealand. I'm almost convinced of it. So I've got four subs here. I'm going to spread them out here, 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 and here on these hexes that I'm getting the SIGINT hits. And let's see if we can catch something coming through here. This is probably some of the most actionable intelligence we've had this campaign for more SIGINT, and I'm going to take advantage of it. All right. <clears throat> Taking a look at the um, ops report, we got a new AO coming in at Osaka. Let's take a look at that, see if it's any good. Let's see, Osaka, Kyoto. Uh, yeah, it's okay. It's kind of slow, but uh, AOs are always important, so cool. I'll take that. All right, so Intel. Looks like the only thing I see here that's important is that he's expanding to Woomba Airfield, which is Australian, and that's here. So he's definitely building up all of this stuff over here. Japanese tab, we capture Badan, which is a big deal for us because uh, we capture a, a major oil production center here with absolutely no damage. Well, I shouldn't say absolutely no, basically no damage. So this is really good for me. There's a ton of fuel there that I can use. So I'm going to start shipping oil and fuel out of Madon immediately. And on top of that, I can take these Oscars here and transfer them to Madon. And now I automatically have, um, what do you call it? A cap. I've got cap over Madon. And I have more aircraft coming in that are currently stuck at Sabang that I'll just ship them down as soon as possible. Once I take Langsaw, I'll have this whole road uh, picked up and we can continue on. So this is good. I've, I've been wanting this for a while. I got hung up here at Langsaw, so we're just I just took it from the back. <laughs> No, no pun intended. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let's look at the Japanese tab. We already did that. We got Madon. And then, again, I mentioned it during the replay. I, I don't buy... Oh, okay. We got this thing here. Again, I have no idea how this game calculates these proximity uh, base captures because, like, I have this base on, on Cebu, and I don't know why I got it. I have nothing nearby. Uh, and then he captures these bases, and I capture these ones over here. None of this makes any sense to me. If any of you guys have some good actionable information on how the game calculates these proximity base captures, please tell me, because I just I can't figure it out. All right. And then we'll take a look at the unknown tab. And the only thing I see here that I thought was kind of not so great was this. We had a chip collision here. So let's take a look at that. I believe it's here. Yep, there it is. So this ship collided with this one. And unfortunately, that's a lot of damage. And that's going to take a while to repair that. So unfortunately, we, we, got it. we only have a few more um, hexes to get to Singapore. But moving at two per day here, it says one. This is one per pulse, and there's two pulses a day. This ship will take quite a while to get to Singapore. So... Um, Fortunately, the system damage is very low, so I'm pretty sure we can salvage this. I don't think it's going to get too bad. And if it does, we'll just bail out here at Bencalis or something until we can get it patched up. So, yeah, these ship collisions do happen from time to time. I always understood it to be around uh, task forces that were about 25 ships or more, but this one has 20. Apparently, that was just too much, so 
Uh, I may need to try to limit the size of my task forces from now on. Okay. Let's see. What else we got here? Um, yeah. That's about it. So, let's go around the map. North Pacific, nice and quiet. Nothing happening. Home Islands, quiet. And China. Okay. So, I'm pretty sure. I wonder where he went. I'm trying to find out something here. Yep. There he is. He's got another unit blocking my rail lines here. So he's effectively cut my rail here, 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 and here. So I, this is the only functioning rail line. Actually, no, it, it, I can't get anywhere right now. So he's effectively stopped all of my rail traffic from Kwangtung into China with these little stupid little partisan units that are behind the line. So it's an annoyance. and I just have to go back there and clean them all up. But I will be able to do that. It just ties up a lot of troops to do it. It's a pain in my butt. So I'm in the process of fixing all of these rail issues right now. Just kind of wish I could be done with these things already. Okay. Uh, so other than that, uh, I do see that I kind of screwed up here. And it looks like I left Sion ungarrisoned for a turn. Which is kind of a mistake. But it's not the end of the world. It's only going to... I don't think he'll be able to capitalize on this in time. I've got basically this unit will get there next turn to garrison. So it'll be in place before the garrison uh, penalty comes into play. And I've got quite a bit of supporting units coming up behind it. A lot of aviation support units and such to start building up Sion finally to give me another base to operate out of. The goal here is eventually to pick up Kaifeng airfield and move it over to Sion to continue operations up here because we're starting to get to the limit of my sallies and other smaller aircraft at Kaifeng. So I'm going to start slowly standing this one down as time permits, which I think it does now. All right, so we can start slowly re relocating stuff here in a couple turns and eventually pack up all this stuff and, and move it forward. Because Sion is going to be power projection into Chongqing and also up towards Lanchao. Uh, as far as Kung Cheng goes, uh, I have a division, a, a army headquarters, a mixed brigade, and basically another division of two more regiments heading up here. Because I really want to break through at this, at this base. This is the place that we're going to do it. And at this point, Helsin is going to start getting extremely stretched, right? Because he's already sending troops back towards Chungking to, de to defend it. Uh, he can't keep reinforcing um, all these places. I'm going to be able to break through in one place or another. So uh, at some point we'll get through. And once we sever this oil, it's going to change everything for the better for me as far as uh, bleeding down his supplies. Hmm. Okay, so good news here. Um... Again, I don't know why or how, but the army headquarters that I was concerned that would be left behind uh, in this hex actually moved forward with the rest of the stack. Again, I don't understand what that's all about. But if we finally have our full um, organization here at Nanning. So I am going to attempt another attack this turn. So let's go ahead and put these guys to... Deliberate. Let's see if we can take this place out. I will support it with um, bombing and all that, but at this point, we did at least clear this hex and, and, and dodge these guys in the nick of time because look what he has in there. Basically, the whole, the bulk of the garrison from Luchow is chasing after us, and he's probably going to move into Nanning too. So I would really like to at least have this base in my possession before, um, before this stack gets here, so... Hopefully we can take this place quickly, and that'll be the end of it. So that's what we're going to try for next turn. And then these guys have two turns before they can get into here unless I start bombing them. So I'm going to quickly run out of bombers here, and I have to decide, do I slow these guys down or do I support the attack here? Quite honestly, I think, I wanna, I think I'd rather bomb these guys than support the attack here because I do have a lot of artillery here now. 
as you can see, we've got a lot of big guns here that I think will be able to maybe do what needs to be done here. So I think I'll use the bombers on these guys to buy me time before they get into Nanning. Because if these guys get into Nanning, I will never take it. That'll be... That'll be it. Like, we won't... We won't ever get through. So it's, it's very important to me that we take Nanning before he gets in there. Because then I hold it and I defend it. Yikes. It's, it's not a great situation to be in right now, guys. We have... <sighs> yeah. Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> anyway, uh, taking a look at Burma. These guys should be going into Tungi. Hopefully next turn. I hope. I'm sorry, Magway. We'll go into Magway next turn here. These guys... This tank regiment will pull up into uh, Mictila in one turn. And then these guys have about three more days to get into Tungi. So we are... Can moving up the road to Burma. I have aircraft ready to fly in and I also have check this out. I have some additional aviation support units ready to move up in here to give us more cap over Magway cuz Magway oil is very important to my refinery operations in Rangoon. I need that oil and then that oil will eventually flow all the way up or the fuel rather will flow all the way into Calcutta to keep the heavy industry going uh, once I secure all these bases here so uh, yeah taking a look at India uh, check this out so we see here check that out nine bombers at Lido what in the world could that be I don't know but we're gonna hit it next turn I don't know why it'd be showing bombers in here especially because the airfield damage is so high but I'm gonna take the advantage uh, the opportunity and hit it and see what we can do with that. Also, I think I'm going to go ahead and strat move mode. Well, no, I'm not. I take that back. I I'm just going to go from there and see what we can come up with. So you can catch some of these guys on the ground here. And I have those bombers ready to go at, uh, at different bases, right? Yeah, and then uh, this turn, next turn, we're going to hit these guys again. Hopefully draw, drive them out once and for all. And then we can continue on with our operations in India from here. All right. So, uh, looking at the uh, uh, Sumatra, again, we got stuck here, but we took Madan. And Madan is a big win for me because I captured it basically undamaged. So there's a lot of fuel and a lot of oil available for me there. I'm going to start moving it immediately towards Georgetown and we can start transferring that oil to Bangkok, also to Rangoon, anywhere else that we need it. We also have oil flowing out of Bengalis and that's going to go into Singapore. So we've got two oil bases so far in Sumatra in our possession that are basically for all intent and purposes not damaged. Uh, what we'll also do here to help take Langsa is we'll take this guard battalion and I'm going to start heading it up towards Langsa, because I need a little more AV to help push these guys out. These ones are just not getting it done. But I think we're going to go for another attack here, because this unit is basically unhurt. Yep, we'll keep attacking there next turn. But yeah, Northern Sumatra is coming along nicely. Uh, okay. We're looking at Java now. You know what? I think we're going to stop with the music. All right. I'm turning the music off. I'm hearing crackling, popping. I need to come up with a better solution for my background noise. So we're just going to, we're going to do this live and I'm going to talk it out. Okay. So here's what we got going on in uh, Java. So um, we are in Semarang now and we are also in Tejapo. So here's what I'm going to do. I am not going to attack at Semarang, so we're going to put these guys on defend and no attack. And I'm going to... Yep, awesome. I'm going to attack at Tejapo. So Tejapo is an oil and refinery base, and he's got some engineers left, I assume. So what I want to do here is attack with the infantry regiment and go reserve with the tanks. 
I want these guys to be able to retreat. And if you look at the hex side control, he can actually continue to retreat towards Simran because he has a valid supply path to other bases on Java. And the reason being is uh, I don't want these guys cut off and they'll be forced to surrender. And as my good friend Desert Wolf has explained to me, there's a higher likelihood that these guys will damage the oil if they're forced to surrender as opposed to just being able to retreat. So, you know, if they retreat, you think of it as like, hey, they want to get the heck out of town. We don't want time to blow the oil. Let's just get the heck out of here. But if they're about to surrender because they have no retreat path, they may say, hey, you know what? We got time. Uh, we might as well just blow this place up before they get it. So I'm going to let these guys have a way out. And then after we take Tejpo, I'll take Semarang and we'll trap them in the middle if they actually do retreat at all. And then we'll take Semarang and continue on. I'll move these guys over, get into Jilla Jap, take it, and then we can rail the rest of our troops up and in. So Java's looking great. We own about mm, almost 50% of it now. And the the most important parts of it, we've got. We got Surabaya, and we're about to have the oil. The rest of this is just icing on the cake, and I have time on this. I don't need this right now. Okay, let's take a look over at uh, Dutch East Indies are fine. Nothing to report here. On Mindanao, same. Uh, nothing to report. I've got two SNLFs, and I've got a third one coming in here shortly. Where's it at? Oh, here's the third one. This third one's moving in here. And then once I have all three in place, we'll start bombarding and kind of feeling out and see kind of what we think he's got as far as supply. We'll get a good test of it. If we get no return fire from him, that means that his supply is probably dwindling. This unit is about one day out from being into Butuan. And once we have that, we'll be able to go ahead and take this base. And then we'll close it back in here. On Luzon, it's more or less status quo, although we do see, yet again, he's got more subs going into Baton. At this point, I have to assume their only purpose here is to bring in supply. So my guess is he's probably bringing it in from Miri or Terracan and just shuttling supply into Baton to try to extend the life of this place a little bit. He's not going to be able to bring in more supply than what he's eating, but it may buys him a day or half a day. I'm not sure. But I have an aircraft unit on ASW. Unfortunately, they just didn't engage. Right? And they're not that bad. They should be able to do so, but they didn't. All right. So let's talk about the Solomons. There's nothing to talk about because we've conquered, we've conquered all of it. So everything's good here. Now, what's not so good is the Australian front. So I had a little bit of a setback here and I'll try to explain it. Uh, as you see here, Cooktown has a supply shortage, which means that my fighters cannot carry drop tanks, which means that I can't escort to Clonkery, which means I'm not going into Clonkery without escort. You need to have at least um, double the supplies required to be able to equip drop tanks. So that's obviously a problem for me because at Bowen last turn, I had 5,000 supplies, and it was my intent for them to move up this turn into Cooktown. See, I set the, I set it to to go up. Um, unfortunately, it did not, and he recaptured 5,000 supply from me in Bowen. It just got stuck here because of Townsville. So at this point now, I've got I've got problems, and I need to. Uh, I need to fall back quickly because he's hot on my tails with a lot of powerful units coming up this way. We see at least 800 AV of troops, if not more. And we know he's also got bombers at Rockhampton. So time is of the essence that we get the heck out of Dodge. I want to get into cans as quickly as we can. Uh, and then slowly we'll start retreating back to Cooktown and then we'll figure out our exit plan from there. So my, my whole Australian invasion is kind of fizzling out here. Uh, I did not act fast enough. I just didn't get this done in the amount of time that I needed to. And here we are. Uh, I, I didn't. I don't have enough troops to hold back what he's got coming. And now I also under-supplied this place. So it, it's kind of a mess. So Australia is not going to be 
a long-term hold for us by any means. Hopefully we did delay him a bit, right? Because Townsville, Cairns, Cooktown are bases that he did not have a chance to build up. And now he's not going to for some time. Which gives me time to build up my back bases here, right? I get to work on Port Moresby. I get to work on Rabal, which is doing exceptionally well as far as uh, building goes. So this bought us time. We did kill some troops. We did hit some resources, but not as many as I'd like. So yeah, that's the situation right now. Uh, not the not the most exciting turn, but you're gonna have turns like this when you play. I've got a major operation in the works right now. It's Operation Foxtrot. I won't tell you where it is until we hit it, but uh, it should spice things up a bit and continue uh, our momentum. We are just waiting for our breakout here in India. The second this base falls, we're gonna be flowing out of here in all different directions. So uh, stay tuned for that. That should be good. For now, I want to thank you guys for watching. Please uh, continue enjoying these videos. If you have any questions, come to Discord. If you don't want to come to Discord, just ask them here and I answer every every single question or comment that's on my videos. I always reply to them. So I look forward to replying to yours and I'll catch you guys on the next one.